to me the summer heat in Iraq. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like taking a blow dryer and putting it on the highest setting it'll go and just right up to your face, just sticking it right there and just letting it sit there. All it's day. Staggering. Marine Corporal Scott Davenport is a soldier who's got something to say. He's had close friends killed around him and he's seen things that, well, he just won't talk about. His story of war is a first-hand account and his feelings on it are understandably deep-rooted. Here now is the second part of my one-on-one -on -one conversation with Corporal Davenport, a soldier's story. As best you can recall, tell me about the most nightmarish experience that happened while you were in the theater? Uh, mine's pretty tame, actually. <laughs> uh, or a the, story that you know of. Just the, the story I always tell people, you know, I, I get this a lot, actually. Uh, when I come home, I say, oh, you know, what's the worst situation you were ever in? You know, where, when were you the most scared? And uh, mine, I, I think it's dumb now looking back on it, but uh, we had gone out in the middle of the city in the middle of the night, a very bad part of town, uh, to find, you know, possibly some bad guys and uh, and grab a weapons cache or, or you know just find out what we could and um, the operation took all night <laughs> and we uh, you know like I said so you're gonna, patrolling the grounds in darkness much. not knowing what's around the next corner and who might be lurking with a bigger gun than yours That's or with a bomb essentially yeah yeah it's so what kind of do? the way it works what do you do um, like I said just take it a, a step at a time and you you know you just look around, be careful, and you know you trust that the guys you're with are going to have their eyes open too. And are you a uh, religious man? Uh, yes. So your prayers over there? Yes, absolutely, every night. <laughs> I think uh, that's brought me back, brought me out of close calls more than once. Absolutely. When the men and women uh, in uniform are walking the streets, you've been to Fallujah, you've been to Ramadi when it was hot, mm. uh, the hottest perhaps. Um, as you were walking those streets, patrolling those, uh, those zones, were there days when you just didn't know if you'd come back out alive? Absolutely. How do That's... you deal with that on a daily basis? <laughs> One step at a time. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. You just go out and, uh, you, you know, you trust the guys you're with and you do what you're trained to do. And, uh, you know, you pray to God or, or do whatever you have to do to make it back. Have you seen people be killed right in front of you? Um, yeah. How do you deal with that? What's that like when it happens, the moment of impact, and you can never really be prepared to see a close colleague go down like that, can you? No, it's, uh, it's not fun. It's, uh, it's very hard. Even, uh, you know, coming home, you know, it's still, uh, at, at the time when it happens, you, you have to tell yourself that uh, the mission's more important, we have to keep pushing. And then when you get home, it's, you know, it's still hard. You and it's to... the politics of it. Yeah. Now, is. what about the politics of it? Because this war is being debated up and down, right and left, and there's those who are saying that you ought to be out of there now, today, not tomorrow, not next week, now. Well, you know, I'm not a politician. Um, I've got, you know, I'm very opinionated on this. I, I think we should be over there, and it's, uh, you come home and there's a lot of people telling, you know, uh, people will come up to me and say, oh, you're, you know, you're in the military, thank you very much for your service. But you know we shouldn't be over there, it's an illegal war. That's kind of like thanking me and then insulting me at the same time. And I, with the, with the President of the United States, I would assume that he's got a lot more information than your average person. And if he says we've got to be over there, he's, you know, he's got all these, you know, advisors and Secret Service members or whoever up there helping him out. You know, if we've got to be there, we've got to be there. If you were to take a poll of, of your military colleagues, do they all feel just like you feel, or are some of them so ready to come home they can't even think about it anymore? A little bit of both. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people in the military that don't think we should be over there. And there's a lot of people that just hate it, hate being away from home, hate their job, and, and hate, you know, being misery, or being in, uh, miserable for, you know, a lot of the deployment, and that they just don't care anymore. Um, but then, you know, a lot of the friends that I have, uh, are dedicated to the cause and, and feel that we should be over there. Uh, I know a lot of guys that uh, have stayed in the military just for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, just, just in my company alone, we had a 50% retention. And that, that, that kind of tells you, uh, you know, after the first term, how many people wanted to see this through to the end yeah. and wanted to make sure it was done right. What about the Iraqi civilians? Can, have you met any Iraqi civilians that you trust? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I worked with uh, Iraqi police and Iraqi army every day, and I had to trust them, whether I wanted to or not. Is the Iraqi army up to speed? So much has been said about w when they can get up to speed so you can come home. 
when uh, be honest where, to you. Oh, absolutely. When I was working, um, when we when we got there uh, to Ramadi, uh, this past deployment, uh, the Iraqi army was not up to speed. The Iraqi police force there were, virtually was none. And over nine months, we built them up and we trained them. And after nine months, these guys were not kidding around, running out and doing missions and, and coordinating and doing stuff on their own without our help. Now, we were there um, full time, but we weren't running as many missions out because they were taking over. And we said, you know, no matter what you need, we're here to support you. If you need, you know, medical support, you know, uh, casualty evacuation, anything you need, we're here for you. And, you know, they, they were really taking over. They were doing their own thing. You are a highly trained, highly classified material of war. You're an instrument to protect the American citizens. Um, do you wear that? I mean, certainly that's got to make you feel proud. But as you're in the war zone, do you have to carry yourself as though I'm elite, I know that I'm trained to do this, and I, I feel qualified to be here? Um, in, in a combat zone, no, you just kind of, uh, you go and do your job. You do what you're trained to do. No one's, everyone out there is, is trying to do their job, and everybody's equal. And, you know, everybody, a lot of the times, you know, we work with other branches all the time, and, so, you know, especially back here, there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, a little bit of, uh, you know, strife in between the, the branches. But over there, everybody works hand in hand, and, you know, we're just trying to get the job done. That said, when do you think will be ample enough time to bring the boys and, and the girls home? That's, it's really hard to say. Um, that's, I, I may not really uh, know enough about, you know, the, the broad spectrum of things to answer that completely, but, you know, another year or two. Another in, year in or a, two. In a personal opinion. If, if you can get people, you know, the, the general population over there to get behind you to support you and say, yeah, we want the insurgents, we want Al-Qaeda out of Iraq, out of our cities, you know, th this is bad. This is bad for us. If you can get the support of the people, you can accomplish anything over there. You really can. And, you know, people tell their families, their brothers, their, you know, whoever, you know, go join the army, go join the police. It's a good job. We need to, you know, we need to have peace again. And that's what you want. That's what we want. That's what we all want. Good luck. Keep your head down. Be Thank safe. Thank you very much. Uh, Corporal Davenport is a very proud Marine. Uh, just a day or so after conducting that interview, he had to fly back out and get back to duty. Uh, he uh, clearly stays away from any of the political ramifications of the war, but you could get a pretty good insight on uh, his feelings on war and uh, about the troops who were serving with him. Uh, we were happy that he was able to sit down and give us uh, that uh, insight uh, from one soldier's perspective. How do you feel about what you heard from Marine Corporal Scott Davenport um, and what he says about what's going on in Iraq right now? Email me. I'd like your feedback on this. Um, you can uh, log on to cn8.tv, then click the icon for Art Fennell Reports uh, and let me have your thoughts on uh, this war in general uh, and uh, everything that's happening there.